Jukebox Review right here on MadhouseRealityTV.com. And tonight is, again, a special night. It seems that every week it's a special night. Why is it special? Because we invite some of the great groups of rock and roll down to our show. And we got Frankie D, my co-host, of course, not on Skype yet because he has a virus in his system down there, but he doesn't have a virus in his body, and that's why he's on with me now. Frankie D, are you there? I'm right here, Mickey. You uh, know, Mickey, it's always a special being on the show with you. Well, let me ask you something, Frankie. Day. How is, of course, the weather down in Florida? How is it always? My pool is 84 degrees. Outside, it's 87. Well, that's like my body temperature. Unfortunately, <laughs> here, the weather has dropped down a little bit in New York, but it's still not bad. You know that, right? Yeah, I know. It's getting better, right? Yeah, absolutely. Frankie D., we've got a great night here tonight because we're going to welcome a group. It's made up of two groups, the Hearts and, of course, the Janets tonight. And I want to welcome to our show... Uh, Louise Murray, yeah. the original heart herself, huh? Yeah. And I'm going to talk to you in a second. We have uh, Donald. Donald. Yes. Gatling, is it? Yeah, yes, Donald? that's right. right. Beverly Warren, a dear friend who's been around many, many years in this business. Also sang with yes. uh, Ellie Greenwich's uh, Raindrop group yes. and many other groups around and still did a lot of background uh, work still as well, it. right? Yes. Yeah. With pleasure. And Drew Montero, uh, one of the famous uh, toys that's here again. And, uh, of course, part of that, the Lovers Concetto song. And then we welcome our historian here, Mr. <laughs> Paul Arante. Hey, Frank. How you doing, Paul? Good. Good to see you. Oh, he's all dressed up. He's got that fancy suit on here Good tonight. Good to see me. We'll get some fancy answers. <laughs> hey, Frank right. D., uh, it seems so often uh, and very, very sad that we lose a member in the rock and roll business. And we lost a lovely woman. She was on our radio show many times uh, with, of course, coming from the Mar Marsania Projects up in the Bronx, New York, Lillian Leach. And, of course, sang with a group called The Mellows. Yeah, Mickey, what a, what a great, great talent. Probably, if not, I'm not positive, but maybe not. Maybe she was the first female lead singer with a doo-wop group. Yep. Paul yep. would probably know that. Paul, is he right, yep. Paul? 1954, that's right. 1954. Right. And, and uh, actually, she met these guys, from what I understand, and... She was, like, totally surprised that they asked her to sing lead. She said, girls don't sing lead with guy groups. <laughs> but, I mean, they go on to make a terrific record, Mickey. All of us that love this music love that song, and I'm going to leave the rest to you. Well, you know, there was a, a great clip, and I'm going to ask uh, everybody uh, around the uh, couch uh, what uh, Lillian uh, Leach meant to, uh, of course, somebody like... Uh, Louise, Louise, you go back with Lillian a long time ago, right? Oh, yeah. When, when Paul talks about 1954, I think the hearts also record around 1954, right? Yeah, did, yeah. When was the first time you met Lillian Leach? Um, I, I think it was around 55. About 1955. Yeah, around 55, yeah. And you came, where were you born? In Harlem. You were born in Harlem. Yeah. And was she born in the Bronx? Yes. She was born but in But I lived Bronx. in the Bronx when I was a young girl. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And Donald, do you remember Lillian Leach? I'm somewhat, you know, uh -huh. I knew of her. You know, I knew of the, the group from the Marcina, Marcina section, you know. Right, right. I knew she was one of the mellow. Yes. And she also had a, a stand with them with Dean Barlow. And, uh, yeah, Dean Barlow. You know, and, and Champion was in there, right? Yeah, well. Yeah. Paul, what could you tell us about that uh, group, the Marcina Project guys? There were so many groups that came from there. There was the Reds, the Mellows, um... A couple of the Cadillacs came from there. There was the Twilight. The Chords, of course, were the first group to mm -hmm. come from the Morrisania section right. of the Bronx. And they did a special on uh, PBS, on yes. the whole Morrisania project, right? 
And then we have June Montero. Now, June, do you, uh, of course, go back with the toys. Uh, did you meet Lillian Leach in your travels? No. I heard a lot about her, though. Uh -huh. A real lovely But I, lady. I wasn't really, you know, I was familiar with her songs, but yeah. I never got a chance to meet her. Very soft-spoken, lovely woman with that soft voice and did so many yeah. great songs with, uh, with the guys. And uh, Beverly, did you ever meet Lillian? Didn't have the honor and privilege of yeah. it, but I sang her songs and... It's just, she had such a comfortable voice. It was such a pleasure to listen to. It was so easy. It just put you right at ease. What we're going to do is go to a clip right now of Lillian Leach and the guys and I was on stage doing Smoke from your cigarette. Take a look at this. Thank you, Lillian. Well, you know, if it wasn't for this young lady here, Lillian, we would not be standing here today. The song that she made, a tremendous hit, Smoke from your cigarette. Back here with Mickey B, the Prince of Rock and Roll, on, uh, of course, Mickey B's Shoebox Review right here on MadhouseRealityTV.com every Tuesday night from 8 to 9 o'clock. Our special guests tonight are the Hearts and uh, part of the J Nets. And, of course, we've got Frankie D down there. Frankie, how'd you like that song, Smoke From Your Cigarette, right? One of my favorite, Mickey. Great song, great lead voice. We're going to miss her dearly. Absolutely. And, of course, if that was recorded probably in 2013, we would have had those cigarettes might have been gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, right, Frankie D? You got it. Hey, yeah. Mickey, I have to say hello to Beverly Warren. How are you, Beverly? Oh, Frankie, I'm fine, thank you. It's been a long time. I hope you're well. Great I am. Great that you're I'm on the very show. very fine. I'm loving it down here. Uh -huh. um, that's great. And you're aggravating us, Frankie. Well, I'll tell you, it's <laughs> great to hear you. You know what I mean? You're aggravating us. Yeah. Let's go back. Let's go back while we got Frankie on, on, on the phone and talk a little bit about... Uh, and Louise, tell me a little bit about how the, the Hearts actually got started and when did you actually start your musical career? Okay. When I was like eight years old, I went to the Parlor Theater Amateur uh -huh. and I won and then I went back and kept going back and forth and I won. And how I met the Hearts, 
Um, this Wait, girl, hold on, hold on, before oh, you get okay. there. You went okay. to the Apollo Theater at eight yeah. years old, yeah. and you won the yes. contest. Mm -hmm. Then you went back again? Again, yeah. How, how long after about that? About when I was 10. When you were about 10 years uh -huh. old, and, and you I won, won again. <laughs> again. So you won the originators of, of those, those talent contests yes. over there. Yes, and, and let me ask you, so now you win, and what happens? I mean, do you get the... Are you what? singing at eight years old somewhere on a TV show doing no, something else at 10? No, nothing happened. Just gave me twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Today would have been twenty-five thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Just missed out by about forty years, but that's yeah. okay, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Did you start in the in the church? Uh, no. You weren't no, in church. You just got up there and just started to sing. Yes. Yeah. Who did yeah. you like as a child? I mean, you were eight years old, ten years oh, old. But who were you listening you know, to? Esther. Uh huh. Phillips. Yep. And Lou Brown. And Ruth Brown. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fabulous. Mm -hmm. Donald, how did you become part of this uh, group called the J-Nets now? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. That's a long story. That was, she don't always says that's not true. I said she was my childhood sweetheart uh -huh. when she made Lonely Nights, Lonely Nights you know? Right. That great big lump of sugar was me. She just didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> and we met at Roseland, and from there on, she was talking about, who's that crazy man? <laughs> but I sure. said, that's the crazy man right here with this ring on your finger. You know, she <laughs> swore to God I wasn't going to get her. You know, but I got her. You know? <laughs> Let's talk about that, that line that's in a song for people don't know that line. Yeah. Big hunk, what was that? Big, big great big lump of sugar. Of sugar. Mm -hmm. Who put that in the song? Rex. Rex did. He suggested that I do that. Now we talk about Rex Garvin, <laughs> yeah, right? Rex Garvin. And Rex Garvin was a piano player that yes, played with you at that time? Yes, he was 12 years old. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Now also, the, there was an affiliation between Rex Garvin and uh, Zell Sand Sanders, right, Sanders? Sanders. And also Johnny and Joe. What was that correlation? You knew Johnny and Joe. Oh, yeah. Well, right? well, Johnny was my best friend uh -huh. after I got into the heart. She was my best friend. I lived, even lived with her and her mother mm -hmm. for a few years. And then... Um, Joe, Joe used to come by the house. Joe Rivers used to come by Miss Saunders' house all the time as I lived there. And I never thought of him being a singer, but I didn't know, you know, that he sang until way later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How did you get your first contract with the record label? Uh, Miss Saunders took, her name was Zell Hicks at the time, oh, when mm -hmm. I knew her, when I first started with her. She was Zell Hicks. And she took us to Sarva Benowitz, and he said, no girls group was going to do anything, especially us being young, mm -hmm. you know, doing that kind of singing. Anyway, he finally gave us our contract. Now, After you were, us. you were, I mean, we talk about all these great groups of, of rock and roll history, and especially the girl groups, yes. right? I mean, mm -hmm. talk about the Barbettes, yes. and the Chantels, and the Shirelles, yeah. mm -hmm. and, and uh, the Supremes, and all. all, of them, all but of them. you preceded all of those all groups. All of them, yes. You were the first, the first. Uh, group to have a R&B top 10 song, right? Yes. Yeah, besides um, the first one, I think, was Shirley Gunther and the Queens. Okay. Okay, and then us. Oh, Shirley oh. Gunther and the Queens, then you. Yeah. But let me just We, we were the youngest, something. though. Now, Paul, you have some information, Because, right? actually, Shirley Gunther's record, Oop Shoop, was more of a West Coast hit. Lonely Nights was nationally on the charts. Yeah. Okay, see that? We have our history. Yeah. And the weeds. Yeah. We don't fool Tell around. Tell them who the original hearts were besides yourself. Oh, yeah. Okay, I was the bass, Louise Harris at the time. Mm -hmm. Joyce West, she was, Joyce was 15, I think. I was 13. Um, uh, Hazel Crutchfield, mm -hmm. she was young like us. And then there was Florestine Barnes. She was young also. And then Florestine got out the group and they put a girl named Thaddeus in the group. Mm -hmm. And that's the original. How did you meet all these uh, girls? Did you meet them in school? No. I used to hang out with a girl named Roxana, and she told me, she said, Louise, uh, there's a, some girls that's looking for a group, girls group. So she said, why don't you go and audition? So I went on 22nd Street in Harlem to Miss Saunders, Miss mm -hmm. uh, Hicks, and um, I rehearsed with the girls. You know, they heard me sing. I mean, I sang a song, mm -hmm. and they loved it, and that's how I got in the group. And that's how it happened, yeah. right? You got to talk to June Montero. Now, June, you were here before, and uh, I found you very lovely uh, the last time, and the same thing now. And I know that you have a product that you put out there that you gave to me to put on my fish. <laughs> yes. I put on the fish, and it tasted delicious. Tell us a little bit oh, about man. that product again. Yes. What was that called? Old Man's Rub. 
Old man. And lump. you know what I forgot to tell you? A lump of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> I also forgot to tell you that you have to put olive oil on it first. I'm gonna put olive oil. Olive oil on it first. Whatever meat that you have, uh -huh. you know, doesn't matter. Poultry, fish, the meat. Right. You know, you have to put the olive oil on it first, and then. You put it you on. Put the, then you sprinkle it. You sprinkle the, the rub on it. See, now I'm not with you. Make the marinade, and then you Max and marinade. Now, Frankie D is the doo wop chef, right. so he fully yes. understands what you're talking about. Me, I don't know how to cook anything. So what happened with me is yes, I did put too. the olive oil on the fish, and it slid right off my plate. <laughs> <laughs> I had a chance to even put it on there. But later on, I, I got it back on there, and we did it right. <laughs> Listen, what we're going to do is take a little uh, commercial break right now. When we come back, we got more from... Of course, uh, the Hearts, the J Nets, the Toys, Beverly Warren, the Raindrops, Paul Arandi, <laughs> Frankie D, the Doo-Wop Chef, and the Prince of Rock Roll, Mickey B. Hang in, don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Hey, I'm Tom Mealy. I'm with Madhouse TV. This guy just walked up the steps. I don't know. What, the, what, what is the story with you? I'm Come comedian on. Frank Prince. Hey, what the hell do you want here? I want my own reality TV show. You think you're funny enough? Hell yeah. Well, how much money you got? Short arms and deep pockets. You think you can make it? I'm the Marvin J. Show. You think? I think. All right. I know. We're going to give him a shot this spring here on Madhouse TV. Tune in and wait for... Frank Prince, the Myron J. Show. There you go. We'll see you this spring. We've got a ton of new shows coming up. My pal Frank Prince, great comedian. Wait to see him. Tune in to Madhouse TV this spring. Have a wonderful day. Brooklyn's best locks in the hardware. We have three of the largest showrooms of safes on display and in stock. You can see and touch them in person instead of browsing a catalog. We carry gun and rifle safes, burglary safes, jewelry safes, Fire rated from a half hour to two hour. Famous name brands. We sell Gardol. We sell AMSAC. The new AMSAC touchscreen. If you're ever in need of a safe, think Brooklyn's Best, Locksmith and Hardware. Right, Locky? That's right, Alan. You know you already want a Toyota, but when you want more from your Toyota store, you want Smithtown Toyota, where every Toyota comes with Smithtown Toyota's Toyota for Life program, giving you lifetime New York State inspections, lifetime 10% discounts on all parts and service, two years of complimentary oil changes, two years of scheduled maintenance, and more, all at no cost to you, plus low clear-out deals on every Toyota in stock. Get more from your Toyota store. Hurry to Smithtown Toyota. For professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. When your cable's on the fritz, you get frustrated. When you get frustrated, your daughter imitates. When your daughter imitates, she gets thrown out of school. When she gets thrown out of school, she meets undesirables. When she meets undesirables, she ties the knot with undesirables. And when she ties the knot with undesirables, you get a grandson with a dog collar. Don't have a grandson with a dog collar. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. When your cable company... We're back right here with Mickey B, the Prince of Rock and Roll, and MadhouseRealityTV.com. With my special guest today, of course, the Hearts and the J Nets. We have Louise Murray here, Beverly Warren, uh, Donald Gatlin, and uh, June Montero. And, of course, Paul, who, Ronte, he doesn't sing. He just looks good <laughs> sitting over there. <laughs> and give information. How about we do a little acapella? You know, every time I always ask somebody to do a little acapella sound, you know, from the couch. So... I'm going to ask the ladies to do that, and you're probably the first four women. Oh, actually, oh no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so now I'm wrong. It breaks it up. We did not have four women here yet, Paul. We no. still got a guy, so we didn't have four women That's yet. That's right. Okay? How about we do a little something? You want to do a little song? Yeah. What are we going to sing? 
Oh, Faye Adams did that, right? Adams. Okay, that's a great song. Okay. Let me tell you just quickly. Yeah. I was bugging her to do the song for the longest time, and she didn't wait to hear how great it sounds. Okay, we're all set. Here they are, the J-Nets. Just leave it to me. So, of course, uh, Faye Adams, 1953, on the Herald record label. That's a long time back there. But you do it so well, Louise. Thank you. I mean, uh, this R&B, we call this R&B doo-wop, doo street corner sound. That's really, really R&B. That is absolutely mm -hmm. fantastic. Donald, uh, you had a, a little uh, to do with the Jesters and uh, Nate yeah. Book Night and those guys from the Shells and all. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we started back in like 1960. The Valentine, they brought that, they brought knives, you uh -huh. know. We, we, we were good, very good, you know, but nothing really became of it, you know. So I stopped for a while. Then I met Louise. <laughs> we teamed up as a duet. But I had a little thing with June, too, because me and June were raised together from Queens. Uh -huh. And they went, you know, they used to take me around because I used to have a high voice, you know. <laughs> and I left Queens, and they... Came out with that dog on Love and Terror and I almost killed myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, you say, now you say you had a high voice. I mean, did you have that full subtle voice yeah. like Frankie Lyman? I mean, did you have yeah. that kind uh -huh. of voice? Yeah, but I you was. You did yeah. the student songs, you used to sing those kind of oh, songs? I used to, yeah, I used to do them all. I just did a show at Pittsburgh. You know what this stuff is. Oh, well, you? tell them who you sing with. Yeah, also. Who did you sing with there? The Justice. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, well, I would, they used to run me home from Cooper, you know. Uh -huh. And, you know, and I eventually took over the group. 
great group. Yeah, Dresses, great, yeah great group. Yeah, the school boys went to yeah, school with me. Great. The desires, the charts were down the uh -huh. street. The channels were down the street. Yeah, that's, the, that's you know fantastic. the Kodaks related to the collegians. All of us were raggedy, dirty. You didn't know. <laughs> you didn't know what group was. Who, who was going to take? Also, also do a little singing with a great group today called Lisa and the Love Tones. Yeah, everybody seems to throw that up and down, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh-huh. Yeah, They're a great group. Yeah, uh, I love her. She sounds fabulous, yeah, you know. Uh -huh. uh, Drew Montero, you are uh, you're a legend in the, in the business, and I, I say it because the song Lover's Concerto went all the way to number one in the country. And, and of course, uh, tell us about the three girls. One, of course, Barbara Harris, and the other lady was who? Barbara Toomer Parrott. Uh-huh. And the three of us got together when we were, like, 13 Actually, Barbara Toomer and I got together when I was 11, and that's when uh, he knew me when I was 11. Yeah. And I, that's when I met Don also. She used to run crooked in the grass. Frankie, did you hear that? Crooked in the grass. She used to run with one arm out. Know. <laughs> it's just still crazy. He always does. He always does this. Yeah. He always like talks about yeah. that. <laughs> she did. She used oh, to run with one God. arm out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always thought something was wrong with her. <laughs> here's, a, here's a lady that you grew up with, and all of a sudden she winds up with a number one song yeah. in the country. What did you feel about When I that? saw him I mean? again, he, when I well, saw him you know, too much. It happened. You know? Yeah. You know? He said, mm -hmm. oh, my God, I should have stuck with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mickey, you know? that was the number one song around the world, right, Gene? You went all over the oh, world yeah. with that record. But, of, of course, yeah. You did a lot of traveling around the world, those things, yes. right? And yes, we did. we did. And who wrote the song for you? Sandy Lenzer and Denny Randall. Okay. And Lovers Concerto actually was a was a, uh, a, 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 a finger box, like a box yeah. finger exercise. Yeah. It was a huge did you number one in England too, I think. Yeah, no, in England. It was number, number one. Yeah, France, it was number one. France, Germany, France, Germany, New Zealand. It was a huge, over, huge record. Yeah. yeah. And June, what, what did you think when you first heard it? I mean, I always ask this of, of people when you first started on radio. What was the feeling you, you got when you heard your song? Your oh, song my playing? goodness. We were like, oh, get out of here. That's a sick, that's our song they're playing? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we had a fit. We had a fit. We had a fit. And then we would, uh, like, be walking down the street, and we're hearing it coming out of people's cars, and we're like, they're playing it all over the place. It was unbelievable, I, right? It was all over the place. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Let's watch you and, of course, Barbara and, uh, and uh, Barbara, Zuma, right? On our uh, on this clip on Hollow Blue on Hollow Blue, watch this.
right there with Mickey B, Lover's Concerto, and of course, the toys on stage, and uh, we have her with us, Drew Montero, one of those original toys over there. Did you like the name being called The Toys? Well, at first we said, you know, that didn't, you know, that didn't really fit us. Like, we were yeah. grown women. Well, actually, we thought we were grown. We were only 19. I was 19. We were still teenagers. Uh -huh. But, you know, it, you know, it grew on us. If and you had to name the group again, what would you have called yourself? You know, I don't know. Now, now that we call the toys, it's like we should be called the toys. <laughs> it's, it's a worked, right? Yeah, it's like I, it worked. Yeah. Here's what we do. We got more coming up right here on Mickey B's Jukebox Review. So don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Automatic freshness, softness, and static control has never been easier with the Bounce Dryer Bar. I just stick it to the inside of my dryer, and I never have to remember. Oh! Old Spice Body Spray makes you smell like power! It's so powerful, it sells itself in other people's commercials. You smell like outdoor freshness. You smell like power. Yeah, I do. Try this routine to feel fresh and clean. Pair Charmin Fresh Mates with your Charmin. Oh, Old Spice Body Spray is too powerful to stay in its own commercial. That's right. Ba -ba 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 power. Whoa. Old Spice Body Spray can change a regular smelling man into a man who smells like power. Now, how is this? Ah! Uh, you know what? I actually do feel more power. Potato chips! Ba -ba 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 power! It's me. This is Beth. Hi. Hi. Oh, congratulations. When are you due? I'm not pregnant. Oh, look at that. Excuse me. You're totally thin. You look very sexy. For life's bleachable moments, all it takes is three quarters of a cup. When your cable's on the fritz, you get frustrated. When you get frustrated, your daughter imitates. When your daughter imitates, she gets thrown out of school. When she gets thrown out of school, she meets undesirables. When she meets undesirables, she ties the knot with undesirables. And when she ties the knot with undesirables, you get a grandson with a dog collar. Don't have a grandson with a dog collar. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. When your cable company keeps you on hold, you get angry. When you get angry, you go blow off steam. When you go blow off steam, accidents happen. When accidents happen, you get an eye patch. When you get an eye patch, people think you're tough. When people think you're tough, people want to see how tough. And when people want to see how tough, you wake up in a roadside ditch. Don't wake up in a roadside ditch. Get rid of cable and upgrade to DirecTV. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Hey, I'm Tom Mealy. I'm with Madhouse TV. This guy just walked up the steps. I don't know. What the, what, what is the story with you? I'm Who comedian Frank Prince. Hey, what the hell do you want here? I want my own reality TV show. You think you're funny enough? Hell yeah. Well, how much money you got? Short arms and deep pockets. You think you can make it? I'm the Myron J. Show. You think? I think. All right. I know. We're going to give him a shot this spring here on Madhouse TV. Tune in and wait for... Frank Prince, the Myron J. Show. There you go. We'll see you this spring. We've got a ton of new shows coming up. My pal Frank Prince, great comedian, 
wait to see him. Tune in to Madhouse TV this spring. Have a wonderful day. You know you already want a Toyota, but when you want more from your Toyota store, you want Smithtown Toyota, where every Toyota comes with Smithtown Toyota's Toyota for Life program, giving you lifetime New York State inspections, lifetime 10% discounts on all parts and service, two years of complimentary oil changes, two years of scheduled maintenance, and more, all at no cost to you, plus low clear-out deals on every Toyota in stock. Get more from your Toyota store. Hurry to Smithtown Toyota. Brooklyn's best locksmith and hardware. We have three of the largest showrooms of safes on display and in stock. You can see and touch them in person instead of browsing a catalog. We carry gun and rifle safes, burglary safes, jewelry safes, fire rated from a half hour to two hour. Famous name brands. We sell guard all. We sell AMSAC. The new AMSAC touchscreen. If you're ever in need of a safe, think Brooklyn's best locksmith and hardware. Right, Locky? That's right, Alan. For professional motorcycle transport and towing, think Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. Proudly serving all of Long Island, we feature expert handling and 24-7 service. So send a limo for your toy with Kickstart Fabrications Motorcycle Towing. We're back here on Mickey B's Jukebox Review on MadhouseRealityTV.com. And Paul Ranti, what a show we got today. Yes. Huh? It's history. It's history. You talk about the Hearts and the Janets, and they're here with us. The originators uh, of the female R&B group sounds. That's right. And Beverly Warren, tell me a little bit. I don't know. Hopefully we'll be able to hear you, okay? Tell me a little bit about your background. Um, you got started where? Well, I guess I was singing as soon as I was born. Uh -huh. I didn't know I could sing because I always sang. <laughs> and I would sing in church, I would sing when I was alone, when I was in the dark, when I was scared, mm -hmm. and I just always sang. And, and I never knew how to answer the question, when did you learn you could sing? I didn't know. I had to think about that, so I would listen to somebody else say, oh, well, when I was in school, I learned how to sing. So I said that because I didn't know what to say, because singing to me was like breathing in and out. Now, how long and, have, you, have you been with the arts? Well, I guess for a couple of years on years, and off, yeah. and maybe about three, four years, something like that, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. on and, and off. And what song are we going to hear now? Well, we're going to hear yeah. Donald. We're going to do Crazy Little Mama for you. Oh, the El Dorado. El Dorado. Are you guys all set to go? Yeah. Well, here we go. Take it away.
Berlin, just El Dorado, like yeah, 55. Yeah, great sound. And of course, we're here with uh, the Jaynets and of <laughs> course the, the Hearts, right? Back to the year of 1954. Louise Murray, tell me a little bit about the song called Sally Go Round the Roses. Well, Sally Go Round the Roses is a mysterious song. <laughs> well, the number two hit. And on uh, what label did that come out? Tough Records. Tough, tough, right. Tough Abner record. Spector's mm -hmm. label. Yeah, Abner. And Paulie, what, uh, what year was that? 1963. In 1963. Okay, we're ready to do that one? Yeah. Well, let's go Around the Roses, right here, with the J Nets. Okay. Love that Definitely. sound right there, Sally. Go around the roses, the Jay Nets, and Paul. I tell you, that is some lively song, huh? isn't it? Isn't All it? All the telephones are ringing. People love <laughs> this kind of music. They do. And that now, was a weird song, and that's what made it such a big hit, I think, because nobody knows what it was about. Now, let me ask you a question. I mean, there's some kind of affiliation here too to the Solitaires. Tell me yes. about that. The Solitaires were the, were the brother group to the Hearts, right, Louise? Well, most really the um, Hot Tub. But you knew the Solitaires oh, very well. Oh, yeah. Herman and Buzzy and, and, and all those guys. Yeah. And Freddie Boxdale. Yeah. I think we're going to go to a live clip, clip now of the Solitaires, right, Mickey? Well, you know what it is? Uh, they had that great song called Walking Alone. Yes. A real great song. But you always hear that song. 
but they also did one called The Angels Sang. Beautiful song. I always hear the Cleftones do that on stage as well. Yeah, they do know? it. What we're going to do is watch the Solitaires no right now. No good love. No love for the singer. guys. That's right. Right here on Mickey B's Jukebox Review. Fabulous sound of, of course, the solitaires and the angels sang. Isn't that great, Mickey? I'll tell you, it really brings Don't back great memories. Tremendous. tremendous. Tremendous sound. And all these groups sound great. Of course, you got the hearts here today, the j -Nets and the history of rock and roll. We're here every uh, Tuesday night from 8 to 9 o'clock right here on MadhouseRealityTV.com. When we come back on Mickey B's Jukebox Review, you're going to hear this fabulous group again. So don't go away. We'll be right back. resident describes her horrifying experience when she first realized the complex was on fire. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Somebody was barbecuing, barbecuing, barbecuing. I said, oh, Lord, Jesus, it's a fire. Then I ran out. I didn't grab no shoes or nothing, Jesus. I ran for my life. Ain't nobody getting time for that.
This is Beth. Hi. Hi. Oh, congratulations. When are you due? I'm not pregnant. Oh, look at that. Excuse me. You're totally thin. You look very sexy. For life's bleachable moments, all it takes is three quarters of a cup. Ah, uh, we're back right here with Mickey B, the Prince of Rock and Roll, Paul Aranti, and yep. of course the Jay Nets here. And I know that uh, June Montero mentioned about that favorite uh, seasoning that you have, June. So tell me a little bit about it. How can people get this? Well, first of all, what I want you to, know, to, to understand is that you have to put olive oil on whatever it is that you're going to put it on. You can put it on any meat, any chicken, fish, whatever, any kind of meat. And this is what you have to be able to call, I mean not call, but you could Google oldmans.com to get your free sample. And then I have an email that you can go to June Montero, June like the month, Montero, M-O-N-T-E, don't forget the I, R-O-O, the number two, and at gmail.com. Okay. Okay. We're back here. What a fabulous commercial that one was. <laughs> now, Mickey, there's a very interesting story that I want Louise to tell us. She's told me a couple of times. No, tell you no story that you're going to oh, want her to oh, tell. Oh, oh. Of course, Zell Sanders was quite a character, wasn't oh, she? Quite a character. And she put you through a lot of crazy Ooh. stuff. Oh, now, I know you went away somewhere, and she had you sleep in a cemetery instead of a hotel. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Okay, I was pregnant. Oh my God! And we had a car accident. First of all, oh wow! All the clothes fell off the car. Who was driving? Miss Anna. Okay. <laughs> and we went to when we got to uh, Cleveland. Mm -hmm. We thought we were going to the hotel. We went to the cemetery, <laughs> and oh my goodness, weren't we scared? What did you think? We didn't know what to think. We <laughs> young girls, and oh my goodness, I said, well, "Why are we here? It's cold. It was freezing." Wow. Really cold. Okay, Scary. that's an interesting okay, story. Okay, very yeah? interesting story, isn't and it, Mick? And that's how the Monster Mash song goes. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Free Monster Mash. You know what I want to do right now? we got some great music coming up, and uh, <coughs> we do. know that uh, Louise is going to do this. What if her favorite us. song she's yeah. going to do for us right now? And what is song is that, Louise? Gee Wiz, Carla Thomas. Okay. All right, now. Yeah. 
Yes, right there, of course, the J Nets oh. and G Wiz. Well, time is moving by pretty fast, and we want to make sure we get this big hit record in by the Hearts that came out there. Paul, what year was Lonely Hearts? That was 1954. In 1954. So let's take it away right now, and let's listen to it by, of course, the J Nets, and of course, originally recorded by the Hearts. Lonely Nights. right there of course lonely nights and uh, that was the hearts the j nets and as time goes by when you're having fun as it always i want to say goodbye to of course the group and everybody else and until the next time from mickey b paul Laronte, and the group so long everybody take care now Pero, pero.